DJ Emmy, that's hilarious, and Charlamagne the God. Hey, Thank y'all for being like cultural leaders. By the family. The Breakfast Club is where people get the information on the topics, on the artists, and everything like that. I'm really like that. You guys were nice. Everybody got me all nervous. Why? Like you guys are gonna let's not go on. Yeah. You're locked into the world's most dangerous morning show. More dangerous than the rock. If you want a breakfast club, you ain't gonna bring it 120 minus one. I come up here. Oh, oh my Jesus, this is what y'all do up here? That's right, get up out the beds and listen to the greatest show on earth. Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 yo
Now we got to talk Ozempic. Now, you know, people use Ozempic. They say it was a diabetes drug and people were using it for weight loss. But now they're saying it's this thing called Ozempic personality. And they said because people are taking this Ozempic, even though that they're shedding the weight, they're losing the pounds. Still feel fat. They said they still feel fat. They still have anxiety. <laughs> they're still having depression and suicidal thoughts. Oh, so they're God. saying it's it's more of a problem because he says even though the treatments are making people lose the weight, they're still feeling like they're big and they're having a lot of problems. They said that things that they also say that uh, changes is reduce their cravings for drugs, alcohol, and sex. So a lot of women that are having Ozempic in, in their relationship, even though they're, they're looking better, they still don't want to have no sex. Now, I wonder um, if that is all due to the to the to the I don't like them saying that fatness is linked to like depression and what else they said they're not saying fatness I guess they're saying using the shot or whatever the shot is making you feel that way because you you know you said you said they still feel fat but so it sounds like saying they still feel fat means that they're depressed enough but I feel like that's the shot making them like that because I know plenty of happy fat people Mm mm-hmm yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's the shot. That's why they, they're calling it Ozempic personality. Mm-hmm. They might mess with your hormones. Yep. Well, salute to all Ozempic gold medalists out there. The problem with another problem with all you Ozempic gold medalists is y'all don't know that we know that you didn't work to lose that weight and you be trying to act like you did. And I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. don't come in here acting like you put you put in all this work <laughs> to lose this weight and all you did was take that damn shot. Yeah, I don't like that. And, and lastly, can, oh my okay. bad, and you can tell usually. Like if a person got lipo or ozempic, because usually with lipo you can't take the fat out your head, so people still be walking around with <laughs> fat heads and thing. skinny bodies. But ozempic, <laughs> you lose the weight everywhere. So like, damn, you got a skinny head now. I be seeing them. Mm-mm. But Is boy, it, what you that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not. And honestly, for me, it wouldn't be worth it. I would rather lose the weight. You know, the old fashioned way yeah. as opposed to lose the weight but didn't have to deal with a whole bunch of Side mental and emotional issues. And, uh, yeah. Keeping our mental and emotional health together is hard enough as it is. Mm-hmm. I'm not putting nothing in my body that's gonna make it worse. Mm-mm. Yeah, but the only thing is some people are overweight, unhealthy where they can possibly die. They putting too much pressure on their heart. So mm-hmm. yeah. if that's a way to help them lose the weight to get to that point, I, I you know, I understand that. But people that just wanna use, lose ten pounds and twenty pounds to fit in a dress, y'all bug it. Oh, I agree. <laughs> yeah, that's that's extra. I agree. All right. And that is front page news. When we come back next hour, we'll tell you about Dubai. I don't know if you've seen the reports, but Dubai has been getting so much rain. They said it's the most rain they got in 75 years. And usually mm. this is in one day they got the rain that they're supposed to get in a whole year. So, like, it's it's nasty. It's flooded. People are using so much stuff. And people don't have flood insurance because right. they don't get that much rain. Yeah. But we'll talk about that next hour. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800 800- 585-1051 If you need to vent Phone lines are wide open Again 800-585-1051 Call us up right now It's The Breakfast Club Good morning The Breakfast Club get it off. This is your time To get it off your chest Keep calling 800-585-1051 We want to hear from you On The Breakfast Club Hello Who's this? Yeah this is Rob Man from Houston Rob from Houston H-Town Get it off your Peace, chest Rob right? Man I want to Uh I want to uh, talk about these bitter baby mamas, man, who's alienating their kids, man, from their uh, dads, man. Rob, you having a problem with your baby mother? You like to discuss? Nah, man. Actually, I fought for five years. Me and my wife, we got custody of my kids. But, man, I advocate for the fathers that uh, that's being alienated, man. So I just want to let them know, man, to keep their head up and keep fighting. Ain't getting there. Okay. That's good sound advice. I mean, you should because that's your child. So I understand. Yes. And hopefully, yes, you, but, hopefully, but, hopefully, all the baby daddies and uh, baby mamas can get on one accord because it's not about them; it's about the cheering. Absolutely, most definitely. But the problem is, a lot of these women, man, they uh, they do all this evil stuff, and society don't even notice it. So, man, I, I'm advocating for it, man. Y'all need to follow me on Instagram, man. Who's the deadbeat, man? And, uh, you finna change the world of how people view parental alienation. It's a real thing out here. Who's the and, deadbeat? And fathers is uh. <clears throat> Yeah, mm-hmm. fathers is um you know committing suicide behind this man, and it's 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 real deeper than what people think it is. Damn. Well, well, thank you, brother. Name. Keep up the good fight, King. Hello, who's this? Devon from Jersey. What's up, DJ MV? What's up, Devon? What's, What's up, Jeff? What's up, honey? Peace, peace. <clears throat> Yo, show me. I just want to ask you a question. You never thought about doing comedy? Nope. But you funny as hell, bro. Nope. <laughs> Stand up is a very uh, specific skill set. That uh, people like Jess Hilarious are psychotic enough to do. You know, it takes a certain what? it takes a certain <laughs> psychopath to get on that stage and think that they can make a room full of people laugh 
on purpose. And do it and do it well. And do it well. Me, thank Absolutely. You. Right. I think it's the hardest and, thing and to do on stage. Well. Yeah, Jeff does it well, but I'm telling you, I mean, you basically on the stage. No, I'm not. I don't do stand up. I sit my ass down on this radio every morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. But thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, good morning, y'all. Good morning. Have a good one. You too. Hello, who's this? Good morning. Hi, hello. Hey, what's Hi. your name? Hi, my name is Ben. Hey. Good morning, everyone. Peace, in. Good morning. Get it off your chest. I just wanted to share that I just got a promotion. So I'm very excited, and I'm very happy because it's a career advancement. Congrats. Congrats. And I was also able to ring one of my team members up. So it's Brown Girl Power. So we're very excited. You got a website or something? Do I have a website? No, I don't. <laughs> Instagram page? Nothing? I, I do, but I'm not going to share my Instagram. Well, fine, Miss Brown Girl Power. Right. Keep it to yourself then. <laughs> she just says she just wants to say that she got a, a promotion. We're going to congratulate her. Congratulations. Congratulations. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy. I'm going to be making six figures. Hey. 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 Oh, yeah. She don't want nobody to know what she look like. She, the people won't start asking for money. That's, That's right. right. You're only making 50, though, but you know the IRS. <laughs> don't, but I'm not going to steal your job. But thank you, everyone. No all problem. Right. Have a good See, morning, babe. That thought of taxes, that Easy. thought of taxes, took all that joy out of her voice. Yeah, quick. she wanted to hang out real quick. The IRS don't take fifty, Charlemagne, until it's two two hundred fifty thousand and more. What well, she think? They taking about forty. Might as well say close to half. Yeah, they taking about forty. Easy. Easily. Maybe thirty three, depending on how many kids she got. Either way, <laughs> that hundred thousand about sixty is what I'm trying to tell you. Why? <laughs> you, why you come with the bad news? It's not right, bad it's news. Like, it's Jesus. the truth. Jesus. But she's more excited about her. Promotion. We don't know That's how long right. she's been there and what she can provide now. That is true. Mm. That is true. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? It's Jamel. Jamel. From Newburn, up? North Carolina. What up, Jamel? Get it off your chest. Hey, I just wanted to call y'all and uh, tell y'all good morning. Charlemagne the God, TJ Envy, that's hilarious. What's happening? Good morning, baby. Appreciate you. Hey, I also want to know I got two questions. DJ, I mean, uh, Charlemagne the God. Yes. I need all your books. I got uh, Shook One. I'm reading that right now. Okay. I got, a new and, uh, book. I got a new book coming out May 21st called Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. You can pre-order it now. But as soon as I get copies, I'll start giving them, giving them to my people. Okay, say less, say less. And I also want to uh, shout out my wife and my kids. Damn, I thought you was a stud. You oh, sounded like a stud. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, stud <of> me. <laughs> he, he did. I was this, whole, this whole time I thought I... Hey, of... I listen to y'all every morning. Okay. It's my first time. It's my first time calling, and I got straight through. That's crazy. Well, <laughs> well, appreciate you, King. Hey, 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 but hey, but Charlemagne, can you send me a book or something? I got you. We gonna. I'm, I got. I got a pack in here for you. I need. That, on, I need right. that black privilege. Hold on. Don't hang up. Okay. All right. Say less. Say less. Get, get all right, DJ Envy. All right, Charlotte, I mean, all right, uh, Jess. All right, babe. You ain't sound like a stud. I'm confused. Was it a stud at the end? Very much. No, no that was the same person. That was the same the person the whole time. It did sound. She did sound. I mean, he did sound a well, little study. He, well, he or she could have a wife regardless if she's a stud. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, wife and kids, but Damn. yeah, then she ain't never denied. She ain't never denied, so she probably Yeah, was so she stud. probably is. It's like, oh, you got me. Then ask for some books. Studs don't know they got a sound. No, not all studs. <laughs> Hello? Oh, sorry. Hello? No, because Britney do not sound like a stud. <laughs> you right. You right. Hmm. Y'all laughing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, girl? Justin, I just did your Sasha from the 502. I'm coming to see you the third. Yes, girl. Hear me? No, your phone breaking now. up. But, but, but Jess, you're going to be in Louisville, Kentucky? Louisville. When? I think she's telling me I said it wrong. It's not Louisville. It's Louisville. Oh. Louisville, Kentucky, oh. May 3rd and 4th. She said as soon as you announced it yesterday, she went and got her tickets. I love that, and I love That's you, baby. What's Can't the name of the comedy club? Uh, Louisville Comedy Club. Louisville Comedy Club. Yeah. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now, Jess, anybody that wants to pick up tickets to go to Louisville to check you out, where can they get, pick up tickets? LouisvilleComedy.com. Yep. I'm looking at it right now. Louisville yep. Comedy Club. Four shows, okay. May 3rd and 4th. Yes. So I will see y'all that Friday and Saturday. The 7 p.m. show. May. 
Yep. 9 45 p.m. show Friday and Saturday. Yeah, so I want to be my manager so big. I think what I you asked mean? You, he, he shouted it out mad fast, didn't he? <laughs> She's just tired now because she over there pregnant, not moving. Yeah. So I had to now pull it up for her. Now you're not moving, Jess. She not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? Yeah, somebody tried to snatch up Kanye's wife. What? Yes. Just snatch her on up. Kidnap? I'll let you know when we come back. That's what it was trying to be. Okay. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious. Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real. Weather is real. Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. 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 She don't spare nobody. Don't spare nobody. Don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide Mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. All right, so I know I teased yay, but we got two important stories to get to before we get the yay. NBA young boy arrested in Utah. Now, listen closely to this. He was part of a scheme to fraudulently get permethazine with coding. Mm. He tried to get the prescribed uh, cough medicines from multiple pharmacies in Utah. He called the, the pharmacy for a prescription supposedly for a 70-year-old woman in September that he just made up. He just made up this woman. First of all, you're not even allowed to be around nobody. <laughs> and a, a 74 year old woman they said that he claimed to, they said he claimed to be a physician and used an actual valid DEA number and an MPI number and other identification for the real physician he's very smart yeah that's crazy he got caught because the pharmacist noticed that the phone number didn't match the number of the doctor's clinic so they called the doctor directly the doctor said he did not write a description I mean a prescription for a woman by that name so the county approved a search warrant and that's when the FBI and the Secret Service and the latent SWAT team searched his home the alleged offenses are possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person pattern of unlawful activity identity fraud forgery um Procuring, attempting to appear, uh, to procure drug prescription. You nailed, it. You nailed that word. Procuring. You, go, you nailed go. it. All right yeah. now. All right now. <laughs> and possession of controlled substance. He was booked in the Cache County Jail and denied bail. You know, the law is the law, but that young man clearly has a drug problem. And I don't understand how come they didn't have this man getting help while he was on house arrest. And now he's going to get sent to a correctional facility for a very, very, very long time. And in that correctional facility, there's not going to be no real correcting going on. Mm -mm. He clearly got a drug problem. Yeah, yeah he, it seems like he's he needs the drug and he'll do anything to get the drug. But like you said, the problem is, is not necessarily the drug, which is a problem because he's almost like an addict. But the problem he, is, no, he is an guns. addict. Yeah, if he's doing all of that. Oh, I mean, mean, the, gu the guns. Yes, that's you're going to have. Yeah. Have to deal with that, but I'm just talking about the bigger issue to me is the fact he's clearly an addict, and yes. he is now a physician. <laughs> Man, like what? Me. Smart? He is so smart. I'm like, and, and 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 you go to that point to get drugs. Yes, you are an addict. Yeah, and if you're gonna do identity yeah. fraud, you might as well do it big. He's, he's a young boy, so he mm -hmm. pretended to be an old lady. Yeah, but, a 74 in September. But but I'm not gonna say this is is, is good. But he wanted to get the drugs from the pharmacy probably because he least knows what's in the drugs instead yeah. of buying because he could have bought it from the street. It's still addiction though. You don't know what you're buying when you're on yeah. the street. Yeah. Least... Plenty of people addicted to prescription drugs. Uh, it's still an addict. Yeah, and and a lot of that stuff do get you high. So he made bail. I mean, he didn't make bail, but you know who did? Glorilla. She was arrested on DUI charges in Georgia. So officers pulled over Glow at 4 a.m. after she made a U-turn at a red light. The officers approached her car and they allegedly smelled marijuana and alcohol. Yeah, no, Glow. Glow. Yeah, I, I just right say yeah, Glow. <laughs> She's in there bumping the album, right? Which uh, she admitted to drinking prior to driving, but would not say how much that she uh, was drinking. And she insisted that she was able to drive. Glorilla underwent a full field sobriety test and did not pass she allegedly refused to submit a breathalyzer test and Idol. she didn't know i mean i guess they saw you know they knew and and bouncing and she probably just was doing well, her little dance but i'm just trying to figure out why did the police make that part of the story her boob popped out why? because they said that she didn't know so they was like it's, it's out there oh you so and drunk she, your boob is out yeah you know, she boob tucked out. it oh, okay, she tucked okay. it you know she ain't noticed so they was letting her know like it's hanging and um and she was taken into custody and released on bond shortly after. She was also charged with consumption of alcohol or possession of an open alcohol beverage container. So she had the liquor with her. But Why? she said she had drunk it before she started driving. Why the hell Glorilla don't got a car service? Like CMG don't have a family Uber account?
know. I, don't, I know they do. Like, what, I know she on? be happy. I know she got drivers, but sometimes she probably wanted to go somewhere. It was four a.m. She probably just yeah. wanted to go somewhere and probably was coming back. She was at a friend's house at four a.m. and she was going back home. And just was going back home. Well, her friend should have said, "No, Glow, you been drinking. You need to sit down and relax." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take your little hot ass out here in these streets. Where you mm -hmm. going at four in the morning drunk driving? Mm -hmm. And I want them to stop catering to the internet. So when she got home, she uh, posted like responses to all the comments, I guess, mm -hmm. with a bottle of Taylor Port on her head. I, I don't think they realize the judge sees things like that. Yes, you still have like to go low. in front of the court. Yes. And when you go in front of the court, they're going to pull that picture up and say, this is what she posted the night of. Mm -hmm. And the judge is going to think about things like that. And what if the judge has had somebody in their family who's been injured or hurt or even killed, killed listen, in a drunk driving accident? You listen. don't know how you be triggering these people. Y'all better exactly. start taking this stuff serious. So when I say F the internet, F the internet, she, uh, just go home and sober up and get some rest. Right. All right. Yay. Allegedly punched the stranger who grabbed Bianca Sensory, his wife. So uh, the police are investigating um, after he punched the man late Tuesday night. He is now named as a suspect in a battery report, and the cops are looking into uh, claims against him. So a rep for him told TMZ um, the attacker put his hands under his wife's dress. Come on now. He directly on her body, grabbed her, spun her around, twisted her, dipped her, brought her back up, and then blew her a kiss. What? You let her do all that, then you punched him? <laughs> That's that what ain't happened. That was a Nintendo code you just said. No. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> and, and, and she was battered and sexually assaulted. Um, and Ye and Bianca left after the altercation. After he punched the man, they left, and the victim didn't need treatment or anything, but that's what happened. It sounded like he wanted to dance with her. First of all, Kanye West did nothing wrong if all that happened. Yeah, if all that. By the way, even if all that didn't happen if he just touched his wife under the dress that under is the dress absolutely and grounds to mm. punch somebody in the, the face dress. even if he, he yeah, even if it's over, over the dress, dress. yeah, yeah that, he deserved that whooping still still yeah Kanye yeah. did nothing wrong in that nothing situation at all. absolutely so that is the news for the 7 o'clock hour and I just killed it damn thank you just with the mm. by the way it's not too often you're gonna hear Kanye West did nothing wrong in a sentence <laughs> <laughs> okay but <laughs> yeah but also is is his word versus the other guy's word so I mean, yeah no, no, no it's his word and his wife's word versus the other guy word and if his wife say all that happened and Kanye defended her then I think we should believe the wife but what if the guy's like I wanted to save her because she he has her walking around half naked and barefoot <laughs> and I just wanted to save her damn see damn mm, we'll see all right. Well, that was just with the mess. When we mm -hmm. come back, we got front page news. Uh, Dubai. Uh, we talk about the weather. We talk about what's going on on this earth. And it just seems like it's just getting worse and worse and worse. God's so, sick of us, man. No, no. We'll explain what's going on with Dubai when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's so sick of hearing this song. Envy. Yo, Jess did you say, I, me. Oh, my bad. Yo, this is that. I will pray for you. <laughs> so sick of hearing it's, this I record. will wait for you. Now, I will it? pray for you. I'm is I will wait for you. I don't be knowing the words of these songs no more. I'm man. sorry, Amy. I just turned my headphones up when you was talking. I'm sorry. That's all good. We are the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's get in some front page news. Now, interest rates seem like they're going to be going higher, which is not a great thing, especially for Joe Biden. And the reason being is with interest rates higher, that means everything will go higher. That means if the price, if you're looking to buy a home, is, is a lot higher. That means the price of a lot of your, your goods will go a lot higher, which is not pretty good for Joe Biden, right? Because most people want to see the interest rates go a lot further down so things can be a little cheaper, so people can move around. And the fact that it's going down or well, going up on his watch shows people that maybe they don't want to continue to think about you know voting for Joe Biden what NB is saying is absolutely true because people uh, they'll forget what you did they'll forget what you said but they'll never forget how you made them feel so mm. if under uh, a, a president they feel like they had more relief in their pocket which people did which people feel like they did under Trump, you know, because mm -hmm. of the PPP loans and the stimulus checks. Never mind the fact that, you know, it was COVID that caused all of that. They don't care about that. But they just know that they felt better financially under him. And if they feel like they're having financial struggles under President Biden, they're going to remember that in November. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the report of why they're saying this is happening. The recent data uh, have clearly not given us greater confidence and instead indicate that it's likely to take longer than expected to achieve that confidence. Right now, given the strength of the labor market and progress on inflation so far, mm. it's appropriate to allow restrictive policy further time to work and let the data and the evolving outlook guide us. And this is on top of eggs being too expensive, the mm. whiting too expensive, mm. everything too damn expensive. And now you're putting this on top of that? Come on now. 
Yeah, so usually when it, when inflation, when things are too expensive, they lower the interest rates that help people out and, and want people to spend a little bit more money. Uh, now that the fact that inflation, like you said, things are so high and the interest rates are a lot higher, it makes things a lot worse. Mm, 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 now, mm. on another a- angle, uh, we talk about the earth and, and how the we are disrespecting the earth with pollution and a lot of the dumb ish that we're doing as just Americans and just humans. human beings. Not just uh, Americans, humans. Yeah, yeah. humans. In Dubai, a what? <laughs> a human. Humans. That's what somebody trying to be too people. proper. Yeah. Humans. Humans. <laughs> trying to sound too smart for no reason. All you humans out there. All you humans. Okay. And humans, the I hell? should say. So in Dubai, they usually get a little bit of rain yearly, but uh, they actually got more rain in one day than they get in a whole year. Damn. And they said, uh, which is everything flooded the airports uh, mm. uh, people's houses people's garages stores and all that and the bad thing about it is since they usually don't get that much rain a lot of people didn't have flood insurance there's a new story the scenes in soak dubai tonight look apocalyptic roads turned into rivers trees barely still standing as wind sends debris flying the tarmac flooded at dubai international airport the second busiest in the world Imagine being a passenger on this plane, battling rising waters, seeing this out your window. For hours, flights were halted as stranded passengers piled up. Tonight, Dubai Airport telling passengers, don't show up unless you've confirmed your flight's still leaving. There are hundreds and thousands of other passengers just like me in this airport who have been waiting for 10 hours, 16 hours. In 24 hours, Dubai drenched with more rain than the city usually gets in nearly two years, shattering records in a desert metropolis known for being hot and dry. No, oh, climate change is real, yo. And people have been trying to tell you that for years. And if you haven't taken it serious yet, uh, it's probably too late. Mm. <laughs> okay. And, you know, it's interesting when stuff like this happens because it shows you how God could really just stop everything if, 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 if he or she wanted to whenever yeah. they want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Literally. And that's why you know I don't fart in my clothes. What you what? To do with the rain this is fine. part of climate change. Yeah, I don't know if y'all know that humans are changing Earth's climate, and a lot of it has to do with like gas emissions. So I don't fart in my clothes. You definitely be farting. Go ahead. I don't fart in my clothes. Cap. Um, <laughs> right. And that is front page news. Mm-hmm. Now, when we come back, Aerie Spears will be joining us. Aerie Spears, comedian. You probably seen him on Vlad TV, Mad TV, uh, and he's going to be at the MSG Hulu Theater Saturday, May 18th. He'll be there, so he'll be here to talk about that in a second. All right. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yes. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Harry Spears. Welcome, brother. What up? Welcome back. Welcome back. We haven't seen you in a long, a long time. Like seven years. Yeah, my yeah. yeah. been on live TV all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they when somebody came in, was like, I don't know, Harry Spears. He might be a little upset. I was like, That's Harry. That's how he always is. He's, he's but always, that's a misconception. Upset by what? I don't know. Maybe they walked in and they said you didn't seem as as, as lovable as as they would seem. But I'm like, That's Harry. That's mm. how he is. Yeah, yeah, they don't know Harry Spears. I've never looked Spears. at Harry Spears and said, You know, he's lovable. He's so lovable. <laughs> <laughs> to, to the contrary, I'm very lovable. I, I just keep an ice cube scowl on my face because I don't. I don't think they can come up and say anything to me. Like, I love you. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, let me tell you something, man. I, I truly believe I've always been one of the most misunderstood cats in the game because I don't walk around, you know, pulling a Magic Johnson, smiling from temple to temple. Mm. So because I got a, you know, a straight, a, a kind of certain exterior, uh, there's that. And then people see me in interviews and based off things I say, yeah. apparently truth is the new hate, you know, mm-hmm. opinionated is the new bitter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just honest about, you know, how I feel about things. I speak it how I see it, how I feel it. And uh, people misconstrue that shit for hate, yeah. which is ridiculous because yeah. I, I just come from an era where, you know, you speak your mind. Mm-hmm. Do you think you've ever been understood? Was there a point where you were and then something happened and people just started misunderstanding you or you think it was like that from the beginning? Well, I just think it was like that from the beginning. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? Cause, and especially now because of this social media age we live in where you got to fire everything. Uh, like I said, when you honest, that just gets misconstrued. And just because I don't necessarily go with the grain of the opinion that you like, mm-hmm. that's viewed as hate. You know, it's like, I, why, why I got to always flow with the traffic? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I don't feel it, I don't feel it. That makes sense. I think that and the fact that you you uh, sold tri-state area in New York and New Jersey uh-huh. from from the, from the beginning, I think that's that's part of it too. Bias is f- 
Yep. But, I'm admi- I, but yep. I, I, I admit it. I admit it. You know what I'm saying? I, people go, man, you, you're a New Yorker. N- you don't like West Coast rap. You don't like no rapper if it ain't from New York. I, I've given credit where I find credit should be due. You know, I love a lot of artists that ain't from New York. It ain't many, but I like our swag, man. Yeah. Oh, you know, East Coast West ain't, ain't beefing no more. Like, we cool with them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm stubborn in my in my, in my my belief system. Is there a certain sound you want? Yeah, certain man. A certain, a certain rhythm and cadence and delivery. Yeah. You know, I just, I, it is what it is. As a comedian, why, why do you think, and, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, because I've watched you, you know, I come to your shows all the time, me and the wife. Why don't you think you are not a bigger comedian as I think that you should be? Because uh, my, my, my mouth is my biggest strength, but it's also my biggest detriment. No, I don't have to do it, no Diddy. I know who I am. I don't play the games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't See, play the games, man. Stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get in that. You know what I'm saying? The great hands. I know who the f*** I am. <laughs> that whole pause thing to me is ridiculous. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When Paul I been does on, feel like you might be thinking about no, it. Like, no, 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 no. Listen, now, when I when I did <laughs> Vlad recently, uh, we were talking about uh, Denzel, and I and I said, hey, listen, part of the allure to a Denzel, especially in his prime, or Brad Pitt, is besides the talent, they were attractive. They were attractive. Mm-hmm. In fact, they, there's a sex appeal. There's a sexiness to him. Yeah. And the, the comments was, yo, it's one thing to kind of say a man is handsome, but to use the word <laughs> sexy. <laughs> Man. You know that's mad in your <laughs> though. That's, that's, no, you said mad sex men, appeal. Yo, you ain't say sexy. You said sex appeal. I, no, I might have said, yo, I get it. I know why women like him. He's a sexy guy. Yeah. He eludes sex appeal. Yeah. That's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. That's the same thing, man. <laughs> you want to say something so bad. You know, I'm thinking it, about it. Like, I, <laughs> what? I don't know if I would say sexy. Sex appeal is the same thing. It's I guess, the same so. thing. Yeah, 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 you recognize what you, my eyes ain't lying to me. I know what I know what ugly looks like. So I, just, I don't know what attractive looks like. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the other day Denzel jumped out of car and he was he's seventy now. Seventy. Yeah. And girls was losing their mind. I'm looking at him like, yo, I hope I look that good at seventy. Helen Hunt looks seventy and she's not. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> But you know, white folks age like fruit. Once they go bad, it's over. <laughs> Listen, congratulations. 25 years of comedy, man. That's Dope. a long... Uh, 35. Yes. 35. 35 years. Started when I was 14. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How have things changed, man? It, it, I feel like it changes every 10 years for comedy. You know, I, I think that it's it's in terms of its evolution. I don't know if it's as potent as it used to be. Because mm-hmm. now everybody with these cell phones and a platform can get in a Studio 54. Everybody shouldn't be allowed in the Studio 54. It's diluting the product mm-hmm. a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. I understand if you know, the 15 minutes of fame, but substance makes longevity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, substance makes a career. You know, and I see so many of these flash in the pans come along. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of it is funny as hell. You know, I'm, I'm, I get caught up in the scroll matrix. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I know the difference between the undercard and the main event. Yeah. Do you still have the same love when you first started? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, listen, I, 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 I get frustrated at times and yeah. there have been moments where I want to quit uh, yeah. just because the, the politics of it and the bullshit of it can start to wear on you. But I'm in, in perspective. What the fuck else am I going to do? Mm-hmm. This is what, this is my passion. This is mm-hmm. what I do, you know? So, got to ride it till the wheels fall off. Yeah. What yeah. are the politics for somebody like a- a- Aries Spears? You know, yeah. it's funny. I, I recently did uh, Tony Rock's podcast. Mm-hmm. I told Tony the story where one night Chris and I, was, I never really had a lot of interaction with Chris, but we went out to dinner one time and at the end of the dinner, he was just like, hey man, I can give you three pieces of advice. Keep writing, stay funny, and try not to piss these white folks off. Mm-hmm. Um, I listened to two of the pieces of advice. Mm-hmm. And like I said, my mouth is my biggest power, my biggest detriment. I say a lot of shit that I, I, I think sometimes turns people off. And again, if they don't know me in depth, they take it for face value. Mm-hmm. And they think, oh, he's this way. But, uh, you know, again, if you took time to really hang out with me and do some self-investigation, mm-hmm. yeah, there's certain parts that I'm going to commit to. But I'm more than that than what you just see in an interview. You know, the politics for me has been trying to figure out how to navigate through this mind f- of of uh, uh, what you say and what you don't say, mm-hmm. you know. So you don't hold your tongue. So do you ever get yeah. to a point where it's like you scared of saying things now? Because usually some some of the stuff that we, when when we used to go to your shows, you you would say off the wall ish. It was funny, but now that that off well, the wall stand up, I'm gonna always be that. I'm yes. not changing that. Thank you. But in terms of interviews, not that I'm I won't, I don't like the word scared, but I'm I'm gonna be more strategic in how I say what I want to say. Because uh, there's a way to say everything. Yeah. And as comics, you know, that's the brilliance of what we. Do mm-hmm. is to put that make smell like roses mm-hmm. if we choose to do that. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm probably trying to think a little bit more. 
Right. Yeah. Is well, that because you, you don't you want to make sure that you're not canceled and you're not on? But who can really about? cancel you when you got the stage? I don't think stand up comedians can never be canceled. Yeah, yeah. I, in terms of stand up, no. Yeah. But then you know, film and television, where sometimes the bigger, easier money is to be mm -hmm. made, that can be taken away mm -hmm. from you. Yeah. But you know, this is why I love Dave Chappelle so much. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't want to jinx it, and I don't think I am, but I think he's uncancelable. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's such a force to be reckoned with. Something you said just now makes a lot of sense, though, because the older you get as a comedian, do you still want to be touring every? Every weekend, do you want that to be the way you make money, or would you rather be able to do something easier like a TV show? Well, I mean, you enjoy it because you might enjoy it. If you enjoy it, but you know, there's levels to this. So if you're at the level where you know, instead of grinding out three nights, six, seven shows, you do a theater for one night, and instead of commercial, you fly in private. Yeah, I don't think that ever gets old. You know, so it's 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 trying to figure out a way to lessen the grind. You know, like I just started doing theaters now. For the longest, I've always done clubs, but. You know, between the, the date at the Garden, I just sold out Toronto. Congrats. Uh, I just sold out Boston at the Wilbur. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm slowly trying to get to that point, mm -hmm. you know? Doing the Hulu Theater on uh, May 18th. May yes. 18th, yeah. A lot of people know you from Mad TV, and I always wonder, because comedians, uh, whenever they get announced, you be like, from Comic View, from Def yeah. Comedy Jam, yeah, from yeah, Mad yeah. TV. And I'm mm -hmm. like, does that still matter? Do people still remember those things? Not, not, if, not, if, not if you... If your position is solidified, like yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go place it in the in the, in the, the person will ask me, "Hey, what's your credits?" I go, "Just say Harry Spears." Yeah, right, right, right. everybody right. here knows who the f I am. Yeah, right, that's right, why right. they bought the they ticket. Bought tickets so they don't need to yeah. know. Hey, I've done. They know yeah. already. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah, I might have been watching you on Black TV for the last ten, yeah. fifteen. I might be twenty five. I don't know the right, on right, TV. right, 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 right. All right, we got more with comedian Aries Spears. When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with comedian Aries Spears. Charlamagne? Why do you think shows like Mad TV, sketch shows like that, didn't have the longevity of, like, uh, SNL? Well, you know, other than SNL, Mad TV was the only sketch show to have that kind of longevity. Yeah. But, you know, listen, Saturday Night Live is the bully on the block. Always has been. Maybe if the powers that be had kind of supported us more, like like even Fox didn't really support us. Mm. Like we, we had some of the biggest names in music, Wu-Tang, Gwen Stefani, Missy. And our lead into the show was the news. So when they would finish their segment, they would just go, all right, now stay tuned for Mad TV. Wouldn't announce who's on the show mm. during some of Fox's uh, biggest hits. They would never promote us. No tease. No, 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 no tease. Nothing. No nothing. So we we just we never really got the support that we deserved. You know, we were like the bastard stepchild to to Fox on our own network. You know, it's crazy. Is that when you realize this Hollywood thing ain't for me? Because I'm being here cursing everybody out, cursing these white folks. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, listen, it's it's part of what goes through the journey. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I always said I don't really know how this is going to end for me. But as, as much as I want to, sometimes get discouraged. I'm not gonna quit. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll die before I quit. Mm -hmm. Or it may kill me. Either way, man, I'm in it. You know, it's funny. I just put, as much as I complain, it's not until you step back sometimes and you put shit in perspective mm -hmm. where you go, I have reason to complain. But then I look back and go, my life versus the regular Joes, this is still fantastic. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I, the kind of money I make in one weekend and I don't have a boss. Mm -hmm. I can sleep in all day if I want. Yes. Don't have to answer to nobody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's better than that? And I said know? that too. And then now I work here. <laughs> you know, so you know, so I, I'm I still know you doing all right, though. Right I know yeah, you doing all right. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was the perspective answer? though? Like, what did you want? Like before, before you took a step back to look and appreciate what you have, what did you want? You know, I, I think that, and and I and I, this is one of those moments where I'll, where I'll say I, I I I hope people don't think that I'm being arrogant when mm -hmm. I say this, but I think based on my skill level, I should be getting as just as much, or I'll say just as much as a Kevin Hart or you know a Mike Epps. But again, yeah. I will take responsibility for why I'm not. Because again, I, I don't, I, I step different, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Was there a particular step that you know, like, damn, that was oh, one of the ones. You There's stepped on steps. somebody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a whole staircase. I did a whole staircase. front of stair a bad move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I probably shouldn't have said what I said about Jordan Peele. And even at one point, I, I remember Kevin was on here talking about the beef with me and him and Epps and yeah you know listen man when you young and you brash and you a New Yorker and you're yeah. an alpha dog yeah. your ego you want to beat your chest yeah. you know and that's always who I've been so now that I'm 49 and I'm looking back I'm like oh, maybe I shouldn't have you did the Cat Williams before Cat Williams Probably yes, mm -hmm. yes. But like I said, as long as I got air in my lungs and a and a, and a shot, I got a shot. Have you yeah. ever spoke to those individuals that you know you might have went at? Well, whether you, it was a Kevin? I want to know what you said about Jordan Peele. 
Well, you know, I, it, there was a, a segment where Vlad had showed a, a, a interview where Russell Simmons had described them and basically said uh, Hollywood didn't pick mm. such and such and such, and this is how they. Mm -hmm. And and I was saying based on my experience with them, especially it f me up was when they were with Mad, especially Jordan mm -hmm. Keegan. You could always see what it was talent wise, but mm -hmm. Jordan was so quiet and he didn't really bring it like that. So I didn't know that really his superpower was writing, writing. and directing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just said that you know, listen, I said yes, they are black men. Yeah, black by pigmentation, but you know, just because we got the skin tone, don't always make you what the skin tone is. Mm -hmm. And they were very. I don't, even, I don't know, whitewash, but they just, you know the difference between, just because you're a black man don't yeah. mean you're a brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They you. didn't really have a lot of brother to them. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, they both married the white women and they carried themselves a certain Jeez, way. Yeah. And, okay. but, but listen. But this, that was it? This is this is an observation crazy. that happens to exist. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I know a lot of people in the comments will go, what defines black? Let's not play that game. We know what defines black. Yeah. It's a rhythm. It's a culture. It's mm -hmm. a feel. It's yeah. a walk. It's a sound. But. It's a difference between somebody that grew up in the hood and yep. somebody grew up in the suburbs. They still black, Listen, but they got I, a different upbringing. I say all the time, I'm a huxtable. I ain't a good time. Mm -hmm. I, you mm -hmm. know, I know there's a difference, but even the huxtable, you could tell all the yeah. jazz. Hell yeah. yeah. Versus yeah, niggas who black. are doing the jazz hands. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Evans was just as authentic as the Huxtables. Yeah. But we know there's yeah. out there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say one now. And and you had him on your show. I can't stand Larry Elder. I can't yeah. stand that coon ass. Mm -hmm. I can't stand Candace Owens. Mm -hmm. You know, and I love when Dave Chappelle referred to her as a brilliant idiot. Because that's just what it is. That's the name she's of my podcast. Yeah, I know too. <laughs> she, she's, she's articulate, she's mm -hmm. intelligent. Intelligent, but used the wrong way. Mm. You know what I mean? Just, just, it's like you, you, you're intelligently dangerous. Mm. So you know, and 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 I don't care what Larry Elder says. I've seen enough mm. on him to where I go, please. That's one of the most tap dancing, his ass kissings in the game. Mm. Stop it. Now you see, I'm trying. You pulled me back in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to watch myself. Yeah. And God damn it, the natural <laughs> is happening. I've, I've never seen that with Ken Peel though. Maybe, but probably because they don't discuss politics. I don't know. Well, I don't think they have to discuss politics, but again, I and, I and I know to the people that will sit here and go, I'm tired of black people trying to define blackness. Let's not play this game. Mm -hmm. You know when you hang around somebody and you talk to them and there's a vibe and mm -hmm. an energy, you know what that is. Yeah. I'm just simply saying they never gave off that energy. Mm -hmm. And that, that was my observation. Mm -hmm. Whether one is to agree with it or not, that's neither here nor there. You know what's funny about that? People, there was a point where people felt like that about Dave early, early, early on. And you before know, Chappelle's show. when I heard that, that was only because Dave hadn't, like a lot of black comedians, Dave's route was more rooted in doing stuff that white people saw that black people didn't really see. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. once Dave did the Chappelle show, came late to the Dave party. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave was, was always that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but black, for instance, like Martin, show Martin, that's that's biblical in the black community. Yeah, that's right. That show was biblical. That's right. Mm -hmm. Dave didn't have that accessibility to black people the way Martin did. But Dave was always a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. And then once Chappelle's show came out, oh, we're well, with it. Now they late to the party. But mm -hmm. right. real comics and real know Dave always been that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. That's different. What, so, comic view then and now. Yeah. Like, how you feel about it being rebooted and how... The it, same way I felt about Def Jam being rebooted. Yeah. Like, you know, that that, yeah. that was something, the explosion, and, and obviously Def Jam came before Comic View, and I tell people this all the time, what made Def Jam so explosive, and it was it, it was inevitable, was because prior to Def Jam, Hollywood only allowed one per decade. Mm. You know, Dick Gregory in the 60s, Pryor in the 70s, yeah. Eddie in the 80s, and black talent had always been out there. We just weren't allowed to shine like that. Mm -hmm. So once America got a chance to see a thousand mm -hmm. at once, it was an explosion. Mm -hmm. Then follow behind that, comic view. But the genie's out the bottle now. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you capture mm -hmm. that, what was special then, now. On TV. On TV. Yeah. And now you got this thing, which is mm -hmm. a thousand other options. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and you know, when you did Def Jam or Comic View, you got on there because you earned your stripes. You yeah. was talented. Yeah. Now everybody with this platform is a comedian.
And I'm just like, damn. Mm -hmm. Like this one on 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 on, Insta on, on social media that pulls the cereal on his head and the milk in the Walmart. Have you seen this? No. I mean, nah, he's like I a know. pep coach. Like he, he goes in the Walmart and opens a whole box of cereal and dumps the entire thing of cereal and milk mm -hmm. all over his body, What's leaving a mess. About that? Well, he, he he's trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. But while he does it, he's telling you, believe in yourself. No matter oh, yeah, what anybody yeah. tells you, believe in yourself. You can do it. And meanwhile, in the background, you got all these people in the store like, what? what is this doing? Yeah. And in the comments, people are going, yo, man, look past the milk and the mess. <laughs> the the message. And I'm going, somebody's got to clean that. <laughs> so to an employee that's got to clean that, that's not funny. No. And I said, if you really want to be impactful with that same energy and that same practice, do that at a police station. Yeah. <laughs> Doing the cops. Believe in yourself. Put the cereal in the milk. Do that at the police station, man. And to the people that saying this is good, let them come to your house and do that oh, in your living room. Believe in yourself. And you got to clean up cereal and milk. All right, we got more with comedian Aerie Spears. When we come back, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with comedian Aerie Spears. Charlemagne. I want to ask you something about the 90s, man, because growing up in the 90s, it felt like people were not as sensitive as they are now. And I'm not even talking about, like... It was a great era. It, it could, like, And it felt like artistically people could do things. Like, we talk about men on film. Right. And like, I've seen people give you, you know, flack for sketches that you've done. And I'm like, but that's how things were back then. Yes. You're, you're, you're judging things on this era. Yes. Back then, that was normal. Yeah. Right. So it's like, what do you think happened? Even though, even the black men wearing dresses and all of that. Yeah, again, social media. Because mm -hmm. uh, everybody's got a voice. Mm -hmm. Everybody believes it because they have a voice they should be heard. They're special. And the fact is, everybody ain't special. Most mm -hmm. people are dumb. Yeah. Most people don't have talent. Most people... You know, they, they should be quiet, you know, and, and everybody's got a chance now. And because of that, we have to protect and respect everybody's feelings and thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's 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 taken away from the purity of being able to just keep what's special special. You know, it, it's oversaturated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. horrible. Where did that come from, though? Like, where did that pivot? Where did that shift happen to where, like, the things that were being done in the 90s that were just funny, I guess. Yeah. When did that become like a thing where... That black man sold out if he wore a dress to get on. You know, I, I don't know where this boogeyman theory has mm -hmm. always existed uh, within the black community about uh, men in dresses when men in drag has always been a staple in comedy yeah. from day one. And my whole thing was, listen, man, again, let's let's have it in perspective. First of all, that is a comedic thing. And when you look at all the prominent black men in Hollywood, both comedians and dramatic actors, we have far more black men not in dresses than we do. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when That's you right. look at, I could go down the list of Denzel, Sam Jackson, Ving Rhames, Wesley Snipes, and it's like, we've played everything from lawyers to judges to cops to superheroes, loving fathers, loving husbands, mm -hmm. everything under the sun. How many of those have been in dresses? None of the dramatic actors. That's I right. mean, I know Wesley did too Wong Fu. Other than that, yeah, Denzel, this person... That, they ain't never been in a dress, but even the comedians who have, let's not play this game. It's like, if you're going to tell me on one end, it's the mean black men. And so we now taking the glory away from Jamie Foxx, Oscar winner, singer, mm -hmm. one of the best actors in the game. Cause y'all loved him when he was Wanda. Mm -hmm. You right. love Martin yeah. when it was biblical Shanae, and Shanae, 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 right. Mama Payne, the big mama That's series. Right. Mm -hmm. So do we take the legend of Flip Wilson and throw that away when he was on a show at a time when black people weren't on TV? And he gave us a platform yeah. where we couldn't be seen. Mm -hmm. Do we take the, the the iconic status away from Eddie Murphy? Yeah. You know, the clumps, Mama Clump, mm -hmm. uh, Rasputitz, right. Richard You're Pryor, right. the That's greatest right. comedian of all time, as the as the maid and the toy. So come on, man, let's let's not do that. Right. And if any of these came to your city to perform, you ain't buying you, tickets. You going. You going. That's right. So stop it, man. So how do you make stand-up special special? Nowadays. I just think it starts with the talent. If the talent is special, mm -hmm. the rest takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. It's like I like that great quote by Jay Z. I forget the, uh, the, the the documentary when he performed at the Garden. Uh, the uh, backstage. Backstage, mm -hmm. yeah. And he said, uh, "Just get in the booth, leave the door crack, let God in." So you know, get on stage, do what you do, and that's gonna take care of everything else. Mm -hmm. He gave you the talent, mm -hmm. so you know, use it. Yeah, Man. I also say what makes him special is not giving him out to just anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you just don't give it out to anybody. <laughs> just, yeah, it's just like, nah. I do like raw comedy. I do like um, styles from like back in the day. Like, you know, I, I do like that. But 
when it seems like it's too commercial um like for instance that last piece of that third piece of advice that you said chris gave you um try not to piss white people off you can actually see that in a lot of black specials mm -hmm. when they trying to tiptoe around stuff right I don't like that because then it doesn't allow you to be creative and, and then what doesn't piss and then it's not even just white people it's all these different you know communities now everything is so since everybody's so sensitive because I really at one point like I really really wanted like a special and I'm not saying I don't now but it's like yo you want it to be special I, I want it to be special yeah. and I don't want to water myself down mm -hmm. just to get that well I think like, number not. one I, I think part of what makes it special too is you ain't gotta pump out five specials in a month yeah you know there's so many of these dudes mm -hmm. on Netflix who got like damn you just had one mm -hmm. they got yeah. another one and I'm like, Jada, cooking the bird up slow. Cook it slow, man. Yeah. And again, this is the, the genius of Dave, though. Of all the specials he put out, mm. the only one I really didn't like a lot was the one in the belly room. But all the other ones, I can't remember the name belly ever, room. but he did it at the comedy store. But it was just him in the belly room. I don't remember mm. But all the other ones were potent. Yeah. But there's so many of these dudes who might not be as potent, but because the opportunity is there or the money is there, they want to put out these specials, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and I'm just like, nah, I would rather, I, I would say, you know, put out fewer and make sure that the ones you put out are fire. Oh, fire. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they follow with Dave because Dave puts well, out well, a couple of specials, but Dave, like you said, is funny. But Dave is Dave and mm -hmm. I ain't a whole lot of motherfuckers can, can, you know, rock like that. Just do you that, know, if he yeah. was still alive, I said the only comic who could rival Dave is Patrice. Mm -hmm. So if Patrice hadn't passed, boy. I'm mad I, I missed Patrice on there, Larry. Ooh. I mean, I, 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 I ran into him. Oh. I, I didn't see him on stage like I knew him from like uh he used to be on that VH1 show all the time right. and like I would and hear he him on Opie, Opie and Anthony, Anthony. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 but I never oh, Patrice him was a monster. you saw specials though right no, Elephant I, in the Room no, I never saw Elephant in the Room oh, not, not in full not in full oh not god in full. oh Elephant in the Room his album Mr. P even his half hour Comedy Central special that mother was a monster I mean, and he liked Dave you gonna say what the he gonna say you're not mm -hmm. diluting this comedy cocaine mm -hmm. it's pure you haven't done a special since what, 2016? Uh, no, you, Netflix won't f with me. Is there a reason? They, have they told you a reason? Or? Just, you know, again, you know, one thing about Hollywood is, uh, and this is why I say, you know, no one does self-investigation. Mm -hmm. This is very high school. You know, with clicks, there's clicks. Uh, yeah. You know, the goths sit with the goths, the preps, preps, jocks, jocks. And people don't take the time to go, hey, man, listen, I know what I heard, you know, perception, but let me holler at you. Let me, let me feel you yeah. out myself. And then they can go, listen, I don't know what experiences those people had, but the vibe I'm getting, yo, you cool, motherfucker. Yeah. No one does that in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go off of what they hear. You know, we had Gerard Carmichael up here, and he said he feels like comedy is a dying art form. Do you agree? Well, I know his stance on Dave Chappelle didn't help it. When he came out with that, and, I, and listen, comedically, if Dave was a musician, based on his style, his pace, his, his awareness, he's Miles Davis. Yeah. And I always said Gerard Carmichael, he has a lot of that same rhythm. He's Thelonious Monk. So I have a lot of respect for Carmichael, but when 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 after he came out and then he trashed Dave kind of for the for the transgender special, mm -hmm. I was like, dude, you you're violating one of the biggest codes in comedy. Mm -hmm. You're putting y your personal sh over the art. Yeah. You know, this badge that we wear called mm -hmm. comedy and this oath we've taken, that comes before anything. And so you let your personal agenda and feelings come in front of the code. You don't do that. Nah, he was wrong for that. Now, you know, lastly, I know that there was you was in the news about a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. I felt like somebody was taking the old footage of you and taking it out of hand, maybe not, maybe, with you uh -huh. and Tiffany Haddish. So what happened with that? If I can't have? get into that. Okay. You know Say what no I'm more. saying? I would love to because it's bothering me not to because on several Vlad appearances, you know, it, without fail, when you go to the comments, there's the comments. Man, talking about everything but that. Yeah. And I ain't never ran from nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I want to address it, but my lawyer is like, until this thing is finally put to bed, gotcha. I, j I just can't touch it. No, we understand. Yeah. Well, cool. Madison Square Garden, May 18th, the Hulu Theater. Get your tickets, and we appreciate you for joining us, brother. Thank you. And can I uh, also pump my podcast, yeah, please? Uh, Spears and Steinberg, available on all streaming platforms. Uh, go to uh, our YouTube channel, Spearsburg Pod. Hit like and subscribe. Or slide into my DMs. I'll give you the links, chop it up with you. And as I always say, 
I know it's a lot of episodes, but start from the beginning. It matters comedically, contextually, for characters, callbacks, jokes, and uh, it's like masturbation and potato chips. Once you start, you can't stop. I guarantee you, it's, it's blue magic. You're going to be hooked. <laughs> there you have it. Harry Spears is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real. Weather is real. Hilarious, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide, Jess. Worldwide, Matt. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. Okay. So Jeezy backtracks uh, full custody request of his daughter. So earlier this month, initially, he requested primary custody of his daughter because of Jeannie's busy schedule. However, he's changed his mind. Uh, Jeannie is now, no, Jeezy is now seeking to split custody of their daughter, Monaco, with Jeannie. Um, in the new motion, he said he's hardly seen his daughter since entering an informal custody agreement with Jeannie last year. He said that... Uh, he said that since Jeannie and Monaco moved out of the home um, after a divorce, well, mm -hmm. it's not final, but after all of that, he often don't know where his daughter is, which breaks their custody agreement. But I honestly feel like if she moved out, like if we just want to look a little closer, just mm -hmm. to be honest, like, like that can be taken so many ways because he, if, if the daughter is with her, He's not required He's to not know required where she's at know at all times. every time. single place that she hey, is. Get you right. get what I'm saying? But I know this stuff is designed, you know, when you are fighting for custody mm -hmm. and stuff like that. He did add that uh, he is blocked from um, Jamie's media? phone. So he can't. <laughs> no, from her phone so he can't even FaceTime his daughter. And he added that she is uh, keeping their daughter from him because he owns a gun. Um, documents say that Jeannie's rash decision to vacate the marital residence and essentially take the minor child away from her father was clearly not in the minor's, the minor's uh, best interest. But so allegedly, you know, she's in her, you know, I'm saying these are my words, simple words. She, she's in her feelings, but also she still, I guess, has the right to feel away because he does own a gun and, you know, whatever. Ain't that wrong with him being she, a gun owner? She just, uh, that's something she's, she's using now because, you mm -hmm, know, yes. they're not together anymore. She was in that house probably yeah. with the guns as well. Yep, and he's, felt he's, safe. Yeah, he's a sovereign man. House. Why wouldn't he have guns in his house? 2A yeah. all day, baby. I know. <laughs> <But the>, what <laughs> you say? 2A all day. But divorce is a mess. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's just are. all this is. This is just yes. mess. But they the only person are. that wins in divorces like this are the attorneys, the lawyers that are right. getting paid and keep billing and keep mm -hmm. billing and keep billing. And mm -hmm. the sad part about it is all that money that they're spending on lawyers on both sides mm -hmm. can go to that baby, can make sure that baby is straight. Or yeah. you know, that's just money that doesn't need to be spent because all they're doing is going back and forth, back and yeah. forth. And these things could take years. Mm -hmm. It could, and a lot of money, like you said. But you <clears> know what? <throat> I just start to notice about Jeannie and Jeezy. What? They're starting to look so much alike. You what? said that because you saw you said you saw Jeezy last night, right? I certainly did. Yeah, I did, and I, and you know he give a little Asian, <laughs> what? just a little bit. Because like I don't the, know. Is I get what you're saying because he got the chinky eyes, yeah, he got yeah, the yeah, tight yeah, skin, yeah, yeah, and he, you know, it's like I get it. I you, right? I swear. And then when you have a child that look like both of y'all equally, that child makes y'all look alike too. That's so crazy. Anyway, I don't know. I'm going to get to the bottom of that. Because what if they really... Not mind. Or maybe they it. just spend so much time together. You know, they say when couples spend no. a lot of time together, they start to look alike. I, I don't... Mm -mm. You're not going to tell me Jeezy looks like an Asian woman now. We're not going to do no, that. No, no. You're didn't saying say it the wrong way. She how didn't you say look Asian at it. woman. All right, well, Jeannie looked like a black man then. That's what we can say. Don't try to say I say you look like an Asian woman. All right. <laughs> anyway, Wendy Williams' guardian <laughs> demands that her husband ex... I mean, that ex-husband, uh, Kevin Hunter, returns $112,000 overpaid divorce settlement. So Kevin was petitioning the courts that he hadn't received severance payments since 2021. However, Sabrina, who is the um, guardian, said that Wendy's income had dropped significantly when she stopped doing the uh, Wendy Williams show. So therefore, the same payment should not be owed to him. However, Hunter was paid through January of 2022. So they they stopped in like October twenty one. So twenty twenty one. So that was three months that he got paid for that 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 slipped past the guardian. Since Kevin was not supposed to be paid for those three months, they're now demanding the money back. And that was ain't no day. That's the guardian probably. Who is this Sabrina person? Why they don't talk to her? More? I know Sabrina. She knows something. Yeah, she does. She know a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but the three payments of thirty seven thousand five hundred adds up to the one hundred twelve thousand. Um, so and they try and get that money back. 
they not gonna get that money. He's back. not. It's already spent. He already talking about yo, where my other money at? Because I'm broke. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, they're not getting it. Back. It's not. They not getting it back. And uh, greater news. This is congratulations news. Ashante announces that she's pregnant and engaged to Nelly. Beautiful. Yes. Drop that's on so a few nice. bombs from Nelly and Ashanti. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love to see it. Yeah, it was like she let it slip out though. Like she was announcing the baby, but she let the engagement part slip out, which mm-hmm. was so cute because she told Essence, motherhood is something that I have looked forward to and sharing this with my family, fiance, and loyal fans who have been so supportive of my career is an amazing experience. So um this will be Ashanti's first child and Nelly's fifth child. We we wish Ashanti nothing uh but a successful mm-hmm. delivery of that baby. And she okay? would do her thing on stage just as pregnant as she want to be. Mm-hmm. I hope Nelly and Ashanti get married, okay? Yeah. I hope they have more kids if they want them. Yep. That's Salute right. to Nelly and Ashanti. I Beautiful couple that. they are. I love the yes mm-hmm. they okay? are. And yes. uh, Ashanti has inspired a lot of people right now. A lot of people are thinking about getting back with that ex boo and you mm-hmm. know having the happily mm-hmm. ever after, you know, uh ending. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work for y'all, but it I works for Nelly and Ashanti. <laughs> right, I okay? was gonna say I think people should just stop looking at other people's goals. Yeah, yeah because that's we true. don't know these that's people. That's right. What God right. has for you is mm-hmm. what they have. What, he, what God has for you, what God had for Nelly and Ashanti, what God had for Nelly and Ashanti. Yeah, that that's that's not might might not be in your cards. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. And in other news, Charlemagne needs more headphones, new ones. I cannot yeah, take my performance. Serious. Why? Because just looking at you looking dumb like that. Like, I hate that. And you are a very handsome man. I've been looking dumb since you know me. But it's like, no, you don't be looking that dumb. Now we got the fresh haircut and you shine that little head up. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Yo, the sun's starting to come out and the weather is, is popping, right? I was like, what if Charlemagne on a convertible, right? And he, <laughs> I know that hair be sizzling because the sun, <laughs> yo, the sun can, yo, his hair be having so much grease on that head. I can't wait till you have that baby so you can start smoking weed again. When you think, <laughs> when you do too much thinking, that's the type of thoughts you be having. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I wonder if he got a convertible, yo. And when he no, ride I don't have no stomach. damn convertible. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad. I did just get some new headphones. Lok just bought me some new headphones. He did. Okay, well, good because I, I, I can't deal with Thank that. You, it's hanging. But I gotta, right. I gotta do the rest of the show in these. I'm gonna do the rest of the week in these. I'll switch to the new headphones next week. He wanna struggle so bad. That's right. All right. Well, that is Sometimes just you gotta for feel the mess. that. Yeah, that's just for the mess for the second hour. Mm-hmm. Now, Charlemagne, who are you giving that donkey to? Man, four after the hour, we need Jonte Porter to come to the front of the congregation. This is such a teachable moment. This man has been banned from the NBA for life. Mm. We'll tell you why when we come back. We'll discuss. All right. And then after that, we do Just Fix My Mess. So if you're having relationship mm-hmm. problems or issues or you need to talk to Jess, whatever your question may be, get on the phone line right now. 800-585-1051. Donkey, today's up next. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Was Donkey up to today? Made it. Damn, the hee haw again. <laughs> it's time for Donkey of the Day. <laughs> I am ain't trying to be Donkey today no more. They should be embarrassed by what they already did. I didn't, I'm not making these people do these things. Called Donkey of the Day, and it really caught me off guard. Damn, Charlemagne, who got the Donkey of the Day today? Mm. Well, Jeff Hilarious, Donkey of the Day for Thursday, April 18th, goes to former NBA player John Tay Porter. Uh, the reason I say former is because yesterday we found out that he got banned from the NBA mm. for life. After an investigation reveals he violated league gambling rules. Let's go to ESPN for the report, please. The NBA has leveled a lifetime ban on the Toronto Raptors' Jonte Porter uh, for his involvement in gambling. Uh, The league's investigation found everything uh, from limiting his own participation in games, sharing confidential information with known bettors, and betting on as many as 13 NBA games himself Uh, including betting the Toronto Raptors to lose. And I think even more damning for the NBA is that this remains an open investigation. Uh, The league has turned over their findings findings to federal authorities. Uh, This may not be the end of this probe, but Jonte Porter uh, leveled with a lifetime ban from 
Commissioner Adam Silver today. Now, let me put this in perspective, paint the picture. Jonte Porter is 24 years old. Uh, he wasn't a star in Toronto. Probably would have never been a star, but according to the Toronto Raptors, they had high hopes for him and felt that eventually he would have developed into a solid backup center for Toronto. The Raptors said if he would have stayed healthy, he would have probably been back with the organization. Uh, they said he provided some defensive mobility, was an adequate passer for a backup big man, and had some floor spacing ability. The Raptors said it's entirely possible he could have landed a minimum contract worth about two point one million dollars now uh the nba right let's talk about the nba for a second it's such an exclusive club do you know how many things in your life have to go right for you in order to make it to the nba number one genetics okay you have to hit the lottery in the genetic gene pool in order for the nba to be a possibility john Tay porter is six foot ten i did some research and by research i mean google five eight is the worldwide average among men in regard to the height 6'10 is so rare that it's literally one in a million. One in a million people are 6'10. And if you're 6'10 and never played any type of basketball, then your nickname should be Top Shelf. Okay, because that's all you're good for. Getting stuff off the top shelf. Your height is one in a million. So God gave you a physical gift that you really can't do much with other than play basketball. If you're 6'10 and never played basketball, you're just a Twizzler. Okay, long for no damn reason. And you look pretty stupid doing anything else. When you six foot ten, okay, coconut long boy, and people see you anywhere else other than a basketball court, they just assume something went wrong. Okay? You're just too tall to do anything. You're too tall to be a mechanic. You're too tall to be a software developer. You wouldn't be able to sleep well on a flight, okay, if your pilot was six foot ten. Can you imagine if you saw a six foot ten pilot? All right, daddy long legs would drive you crazy. Okay, thinking about what is he doing with his legs in that cockpit? I'm just trying to explain to you how rare being six foot ten is, okay? One in a million. And then just to make it to the NBA, there's only 560 players in the NBA. Think about how few that is, okay? Think about how rare it is to make it to the league. 560 players, only 1.2% of college players make it from college to the NBA. So usually the path is college to the NBA, and look how difficult that is. Jonte Porter's path was even more difficult. Difficult, okay? He did one season at Missouri, was named to the 2018 SEC All-Freshman Team, won SEC Sixth Man of the Year, tore both his ACL and MCL in the scrimmage game, missed his sophomore season while rehabbing the injury, still decided to enter his name into the 2019 NBA Draft, and God blessed him with an opportunity to, uh, you know, get signed by the Grizzlies. He went undrafted, but he got signed by the Grizzlies in 2020. But he didn't play while rehabbing from the ACL. The Grizzlies re-signed him to a multi-year contract. He ended up getting waived, then spent time in the G League, then signed a two-way deal with the Raptors. You know, when he played for the Grizzlies, he made $2.3 million over three seasons. Do you hear how difficult it was for him to make it to the NBA? And he's not even the first in his family to do it. That's how you know it's kind of destiny, right? His brother, Michael Porter Jr., NBA world champion for the Denver Nuggets, averages 16 and 7 this year, got a five-year, $179 million contract. So Jante has a blueprint for this, okay? There is a role model for him in all of this. All he had to do was continue to do what he's been doing, which is work. You've been working hard your whole entire life, working hard to get to a certain point, only to blow a potential multi-million dollar opportunity for $10 an hour. But that's all he got. He got $21,000 was the payout, right, from the gambling. So $21,000 a year, that's about $10 an hour. John T., if you was old on your last legs in the league, you done played about 13, 14 seasons, I would be like, whatever. I might even understand. But you 24 in a league where you don't even have to do much to get paid nowadays except be tall. And now you're about to be in this world tall for no damn reason. Just out here looking like you're ready to kidnap clouds because you got banned from the NBA for life. Now salute the Bonzi Wells and Rasheed Wallace. Uh, they were talking about this situation on the Rasheed and Tyler show and they absolutely gave John Tate the credit he deserves for being stupid. So let's hear it. In the words of Charlemagne the God, he got donkey. <laughs> he's, it's tough. He's a donkey. That was he mother <laughs> hall. Life is about choices, y'all. Okay? Destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. I tell y'all this all the time. One poor choice can ruin everything. And he made a poor choice. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today. Well deserved. Yes, indeed. All right, now when we come back, just fix my mess. If you need relation, if you have relationship problems or issues, and you need some advice. <laughs> 
800-585-1051. Call Jess Listen right how fast now. she sounds when she talks to. Right? Y'all noticed that last break when she... <laughs> First of all, that you five month pregnancy kiss in her ass. Sa- sound like that? Yes. In oh pregnant my God. people. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Just fix so my message sad. next, y'all. Yes. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. X about me. Relationship problems? X about me. You need to beat your coworker's ass. X about me. Your coworker need to beat your ass? Call it up. It's Dr. Jess, and I'm here to fix your mess. Fix your mess. Fix your mess. It's getting very much messy. Let me fix this. Yeah. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess Fix My Mess. Hello, who's this? Hi, I'm Naya. Hey, Naya. Hi, Naya. What's your question for Jess? Jess, my question is, I got to give you a little background. I've been in a relationship for about a year, and through that year, it's been good, but I've been having some baby mama drama with one of his baby mothers. Mm. I've stayed in a relationship and dealt with it because she lives in Georgia, states away, okay. but... Now she's moving to Jersey, and I really feel like it's a problem. Should I be worried about this or not? What are, what are the problems that you had from her? She still wants him. Oh, she still wants him, and he's aware of that. He knows that, obviously. Yep. Has he showed you in any way that he wants her still, or, like, how does that, how does that? So she plays the whole baby game. She punishes him with the baby, so he claims he plays along because of the baby. Yeah, see, I don't really appreciate that type of behavior from um, the father because just like women are quick to take a man to court, a man can take a woman to court as well. And um, courts don't play games, (laughs) you know what I mean? So I don't understand. Have have you ever brought that up to him? Like, why don't you just go through the courts? To I definitely have, but I ignored it because I'm like, she's away. No, those are just No, I got you. Mm -hmm. I understand. But now she's here. Now she's moving to Jersey. Mm. Oh, she, she already moved to Jersey? Yeah, she did. Surprise, she just randomly popped up. Oh yeah. So I feel like he knew that. I feel like I feel like he knew. It, it wasn't random. He he knew she was coming. You know what I'm saying? I think um the baby game can only be played if you if the if the guy is still slightly entertaining what's going on you know what i'm saying like or because if he didn't want anything to do with her but loves his child and don't want anything to mess up the relationship with his child he will go through the courts like you you can't not you you can't do that he has to slightly enjoy this this attention that he get from her like i'm not saying he wants to be with her but he like he i mean it's not bothering him it's bothering you more than it's bothering him that's a problem so mm-hmm. I feel like if that don't change, it's only been a year, and it could be five more of that. Right. Um, and you love him, don't you? Like real big. I, I do. I do. I know. But yeah, if, if that if that don't change, babe, she already here. She ain't moving back, and he ain't trying to make her neither. And like I said, he ain't taking legal action. So I feel like you know what to do if it if if, if it don't change. Right. Okay. Yeah. That, that was my question. I just need some confirmation. I got you. I know that's the right, girl. All right, check in with me. Let me know. All right. Thanks. Good luck, mama. All right. Call her up right now. Just fix my mess. 800-585-1051. If you need relationship problems, if you're having relationship problems and you need some help, Jess is here to help you. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Help me. Tell, tell up, baby. Help me. It's the real deal. Help me. Help me. Oh my god. I'm all up in your mess. I'm gonna fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Just gonna fix your mess cuz my advice is real. Morning everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilaria, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're in the middle of Just Fix My Mess and who do we have on the line? Hello, who's this? Hey. Hi, how are you? Is what's this? up? Yep, this is Jess. Hey, what's happening? Nothing. What's, your question what's wrong for with you? So, I got, so so this is my question. So is it okay to leave a marriage? If you got married for the wrong reason and you've had enough of the marriage. Uh, example, I've been married for three years. Uh, in 2018, I was shot uh, multiple times. I survived. Um, I wanted to air. I wanted to see. In order for me to have that see, you know, my wife told me, well, my wife now, she told me she wasn't, you know, having no kids without being married. So that's what I did. I married her. I had my daughter. Now I have my daughter. I'm kind of done with the marriage now. Damn. Is it okay to leave? Damn. Um, uh, what the hell? We're I mean, not we're just, Well, I <laughs> love your honesty, first of all, but it was built on a lie, kind of. So you kind of, you married her just for a baby. 
Like, hey. you know, it was plenty of women out there that would give you a baby without marriage, right? And if you really exactly. wasn't in it for her, you know, because she seems like she entered the marriage for right reasons. She wanted a husband and she wanted a family or she would have never made you marry. She would have never, you know, said, I'm only having a baby when I'm married. This sounds like a woman who had her mind made up about family. You just wanted a kid. It's so many women who have kids without requiring marriage ever. Like, that was unfair completely. I do think that you need to leave the marriage and um, give her her life back. Um, you can't undo what you did because that's a whole life that y'all created. But holding her basically hostage in a marriage or leading her on, does she know you feel like this? Yeah. Dying. That, that's yeah, another yeah. issue. That's another issue. I'm mm. trying to leave, but I can't. Like, oh, so she holding you hostage. <laughs> she holding she you hostage. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you gonna have to pay for that, buddy. I don't know what you. Yeah. You that. Yeah. That's your karma. Cause you. Cause that. And it came back to bite you right in your ass. Cause um. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be with you if you told me that. Like, cause that as honest as it is, I can respect it. But I wouldn't even want to be with you if you told me that. Like, nah. I'm. I'm good then. You know. And I would just end up being a mother, figuring out how to co-parent. But um, to answer your question, um. Yeah, it, it's. I think it is okay to leave a marriage if you um if you got into it for the wrong reasons. I just don't like the way you did it. That was messed up. But this is your karma, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, then. Appreciate it. All right, no problem. All right. Damn. Just fix my mess. 800-585-1051. Now, when we come back, we got Jess with the mess. Celebrity news. What are we talking about? A bunch of throwaway stories. Jesus. Basically, I, you know, I say throwaway when it's like stuff that shouldn't be news. Mm -hmm. But um, I still got to do them Because ain't nothing else going on Oh when okay. she tired And the baby start to pressure Put that pressure on On her top part of her stomach <laughs> That's when she do that too Don't All be right. trying to clean it up When it ain't supposed to be stuff reported But I got to report <laughs> something Because I got to do it three times a day Alright well we'll get to that next It's The Breakfast Club Good morning The Breakfast Club It's already raining outside man <laughs> You let just live Just said this is a song I love giving in you look outside when this song playing and it's raining, it's appropriate. Yeah, it's right, so sad, please. Right? You be talking about snooze all the time, and then now we give you another banger, and now you talking about, oh, no, <laughs> Don't listen to me. You heard what I pulled up listening to this morning. G yeah, what, what was it? Yolanda Regina Adams? Bell, God is good. Oh, I know. I dare right. you to say something negative. No, I'm not. Being I'm held not. by noon. I know. Oh, my God. It's all right. <laughs> well, let's get to Jess with the mess. with the breakfast. News is real. Weather is Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. Somebody needs to on the Breakfast Club. She's a culture shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. Adrian Broner swiftly rejected after shooting his shot at Coyle Ray during IG Live. I'm glad that somebody rejected his ass. I can't stand the way he talked to women. So. You said he talked to you crazy one time, right? Yeah, he was a clown. Like, when it came out that I was um, pregnant, he was like, congratulations, bitch. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Unless you're from Baltimore, nigga, do not play with me like that. Where did they be from? I forgot. I don't know. It don't matter. <laughs> it really don't matter. But he's a clown. Um, but yeah. Congratulations, bitch. Yeah, so he's blocked. Like, <laughs> Sounds so crazy. Yeah, but only people from Baltimore can talk to me like that. Like, that's how it is. Like, you're not from here. I like, never heard Baltimore say, they say dummy. Yeah, we say dummy, but we okay. say, like, little bitch. We say that. Okay, okay, A okay. lot. But yeah, you say, I can't say that on the radio now? What? what? Little bitch. Why can't you, can? you say that? I don't know. You was looking like it was too harsh. Like, no, what? I'm just listening to you. Oh, all y'all from Baltimore harsh. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, Lord, podcast, podcast alert. Listen up, Charlemagne. Memphis Bleak announced his podcast series, Rock Solid. Well, Black Effect is open. Oh, that's going to be on so. the Drink Champs podcast network, mm -hmm. actually. Oh, okay. Well, another podcast in the world. Yes. Nice. Uh, Zendaya says, I don't know if Euphoria will return. <laughs> it's beyond me. Yes, leave that girl alone. She's just the star of the show. She's not the showrunner. So. And they too old now. By the time that show comes back, they cannot be in high school no more. It would have to jump like five, six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Takashi 6 ix cars and other items seized from Florida home by IRS agents. So that means he ain't got no money or something? I don't know it what they mean. He got a, a, a outstanding bill. And they need oh, to get yeah, that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's oh, when so the IRS come like that. Oh, wow. So, so do a lot of other people. So I be wondering about that, though. And I think I, I really do be thinking about uh, people because 
everybody's making a, 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 a new kind of money now. Mm-hmm. But it's the same old money. They're just making it in different ways. So mm-hmm. you have people making money off these podcasts and YouTube and everything yep. else. And Patreons and everybody be bragging about how much money they got. I'd be like, I wonder if they paying their taxes. Right. And then at the end of the year, the <laughs> IRS right. seizes That's right. such and such belongings. I think about that quite often. That's crazy. You know, and, the, and the sad thing about it is a lot of these people, is, is different forms, like you said. So when it comes in and they deposit the amount, mm-hmm. they can go back three, four, five years and then they just go in your account and be like, well, what's this deposit for? You ain't pay taxes. You, get, you owe me. What's this deposit for? You ain't pay taxes. You owe me. Mm-hmm. And then when you ain't got it because it might not be That's working right. anymore, like Takashi, when's the last time Takashi put out a record? That's when's right. the last time he went on the road? No idea. And he's problem. also seen giving away a lot of money, too. Well, so yeah. I hope y'all paying your taxes. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kayla Lillard, the estranged wife of NBA star Damian Lillard, comments on Glorilla's recent arrest, posting her, her mugshot picture saying, Free Glow Lillard, hashtag sister wife. She was laughing at it. So, baby, um, yeah. this actually lets us know one of two things. Either y'all are sharing him or you just confirmed that she took your man <laughs> and you mad about it. Either way, we'll she's sister wife though. So yeah, but she also laughed and all of that and put emo- emojis be meaning something else when a woman yeah, put yeah. it. You know, I mean yeah. that's the way of coming out. Sister yeah. wives now, but Bum. like he filed for divorce. Let's just keep that in our back pocket. Or maybe she was upset because remember Glorilla shot yeah. her shot at Damien and she maybe she did. didn't like it and it was like like a ha ha. You know, mm, type of thing. And Glorilla was like, I don't care who um Iggy this is, I want him. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the, but I mean, she home now, so it don't matter. You posting the picture like she's still in there. All right, Twenty One Savage, only rapper make only rapper to make one what? Twenty One Savage, only rapper to make times one hundred most influential people of twenty twenty four list. Not mad at it. Salute to Twenty One. Yeah, yeah, but um, just to dig a little deeper, who are the people making these lists? Uh, and then 2024 is not even we only in April we got like eight more months something like what is going on that's oh my a gosh good point. maybe that's for 20 maybe that's the people for 2023 I don't know how they do that but he made the that? 2024 list but I know they said Burner Boy actually um, wrote about him but Burner Boy not even from over here mm. oh my god Asia Wilson made that list too dropping the clues bombs for South Carolina going Asia Wilson plays oh, for Las nice. Vegas Aces she made the list as well yeah. that's not just a US list right it's a it just says 100 worldwide, most influential people. It's worldwide. I don't, I don't think know. Don't give me the line. I yeah. Have no idea. Russell Simmons and Lisa Ray McCoy spent a little quality time, quality time together in Bali. They were seen at dinner. Look, so what? They could be friends or whatever. They're speculating that they might be together. First of all, they're too old for us to care. It don't matter. Like whatever, if they seen together, be together. You know that place is a wellness retreat, though. Like, like, yeah. like Russell Simmons has a wellness retreat out there. But my thing is, either way, it don't matter. Oh like, yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, first, yeah, they yeah. were just seen at dinner. How how are people? I think people be at the wellness together. retreat that Ru- uh, that Russell owns. I don't know that for sure, but that's yeah. what it seems like. Yeah, people well, Usher think. was just there, right? Like what? A week yeah, ago yeah. Or like that. So they be there doing yoga and meditation oh, and mindfulness. Right. It's a it's a way to go mentally decompress. Right, and if right. It, and if you want to see it, if you see Russell Simmons, it's like, hey, what's up? Let's take a picture. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Rihanna talks R nine. She said, I already got stuff that I feel I can make hits out of. Girl, you don't got no album. Make me out of a liar, please. <laughs> she, been, she been lying and playing for years. Polo G says, drugs and liquor help me cope with pain, but I need better vices. So look, one of his fans said, I thought you said you don't use drugs no more. And he said, MFA, I stopped and started again. And then he said, <laughs> then he said I know. But then he said, still to this day, I haven't popped a perk for the respect for my brother. But it's a lot of other drugs out here, gang. This is my thing. If you so aware... Right? If you're so aware, how are you still so easily to get into drugs? And you're so aware to know you need other vices. And you haven't popped, you you skipping over perks mm-hmm. out of respect for your brother. But you going to go to everything else. Like, yo, he's aware. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah and that's, so that, like, that's actually the first step, right? Because there's ways to start a healing journey. Number one, you do have to acknowledge and accept your pain. So as you said, Jess, if you're aware that you're going through yeah. something, if you're aware that you're dealing with some pain, then you need to set some new intentions and goals to deal with that pain. And exactly. that intention and goal can't be to go get some alcohol and go get some liquor. You need to take your ass to therapy. Yeah, but you skipping over perks. No, no perks. Because I say, I told my brother, no, not them. But hand me that over there. Like, no. Yeah, brother's doing everything uh, except for going to therapy. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Okay. Uh, Nia Long says, y'all got me about to cut my hair again. Okay. What happened? Going through something? <laughs> no, she was just reminiscing on how good she looked back in the day, which she still look good still now. Look good. But she she looked good back in the day with that shortcut, so she thinking about getting it again. But they reported it like it was like, oh, Nia Long about to cut her hair. Whoa, 
Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Listen, man, people got content to fill, just like you do. <laughs> yeah, this is it right here. This is it. Me filling it. That was Jess with the mess. Thank you, Jess. Mm-hmm. Now, the People's Choice Mix is up next. Get your request in. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, Jess, you going to be in Louisville? Yes, Louisville, Kentucky, the first weekend of May at the Louisville Comedy Club. Um, make sure y'all get y'all tickets. We got four shows, two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday, um, a 7.15 and a 9.30, if I'm not mistaken. Get up on that website. You can also find tickets at JessHilariousOfficial.com, y'all. Yes, I'm stepping out, and I'm going to be even bigger but better, shorty, when I get up on that stage, y'all. So make sure y'all look for me in Louisville. Definitely I'm bigger, because she'll be about six months then. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just, yo, we just the can't truth. wait. And then everyone needs to know, yep. Like, yeah, I mean, you're going to be bigger because you are a baby. I'm not talking about weight. Let's, I'm talking about baby weight. Thank you. But I've meant a bigger comedian. Just oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Damn well, you're going to be big. You're going to be wide because when you get up there, like, yo, y'all, y'all are hell. That's crazy. Get your tickets, y'all. All right. When we come back, we got the positive notice to Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a salute to uh, Aerie Spears for joining us today. Yeah, salute to the good brother, Ari Spears. He'll be uh, headlining. He'll be doing a show at the Hulu Theater mm-hmm. on May 18th, you know, mm-hmm. that, at, at, at MSG. So go get your tickets for that if you haven't already, man. All right. Now you got a positive note? I do, but I want to tell people, make sure that you go get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happening uh, Saturday, April 27th. Yeah, April, tam- yep, April 27th. April 27th. This is next week. I can't wait till it comes because I'm sick of hearing you say that every day. <laughs> I can't I can't believe it's next week. I'm like, damn, that, that came fast. But uh, next week, April 27th, go get your tickets at eventbrite.com or blackeffect.com uh, slash podcast festival. Salute to everybody that's listening to us on 96.1 now. Tell people. Okay, because I'm tired of y'all being in the comments sending me pictures of 105.3 talking about, oh my God, you're not on there anymore. Keep clowning everybody who they hear like, who is this? Who, I don't want to hear this. I'm like, yo, 96.1 96.1. Right. Why they don't run commercials on 105.3 at least saying, hey. Letting them know. We're no longer 90, 105.3. If you want to hear that stuff, go to 96.1. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> well, they got billboards and stuff like that up now, too. Okay. Yeah, they do. Like we, They got, I think it's like three of them in Atlanta. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so that's what's up. But the positive note is simply this. Absolutely no one is obligated to help your big grown ass. Appreciate what people do for you. Have a blessed day. Breakfast Club, bitches! You all finished or y'all done? You're checking out The Breakfast Club. eBay Motors is here for the ride. With the parts you need for the prices you want. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they're guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The Breakfast Club. The Positive Note is brought to you by Lincoln Tech. Train for careers in auto, skilled trades, and more at Lincoln Tech. Mom, I got the job in Manhattan. Do you have a warm enough winter coat? What about your car? I'm selling it with Kelly Blue Book Instant Cash Offer. How? I enter my license plate number, miles.